Good morning and welcome to San Diego People. I'm Alan Denton. My guest today is known for being the voice of a variety of programs, both locally and nationally. This month, Mark Larson celebrates 35 years in broadcasting. Throughout his career, he has covered a variety of issues and interviewed many high-profile people. He's also actively involved in a number of local organizations, including chairman of the board for the San Diego Air and Space Museum. Joining me now to share some of your stories is Mark Larson. Welcome, Mark. Well, thank you. I'm honored to be here. And it's 35 years in San Diego, San Diego radio. But actually broadcasting a little yeah. bit longer. Huh? Go back to when I was 12, and uh, we'll, we'll figure out the math later. I don't want to say exactly uh, when I was born, but same year as Disneyland and McDonald's. It's been a few years. Which would be 1955. <coughs> Excuse me. So yes. what, what exactly inspired you to get in broadcasting? What was your first job? First job, uh, well, the first job, legal or illegal? Well, e either See, one. That's the, because a lot of people who are wired in this business from the start, uh -huh. you'll find some very early recollections. I knew, I could picture this even as I say it, that when I crawled in bed with mom and dad at age five and the radio was on, I was fascinated with radio. Yeah. And I thought, that's really cool. I want to, maybe I could do that someday. And I was five. That means, I don't know if it was eating paint chips or what, uh -huh. but that's not, <laughs> like yeah. Turco would say, that's not right. That ain't right. <laughs> but, uh, from that, I just had this, this interest. Fast forward to when I'm 12 years old uh -huh. in junior high in Rockford, Illinois, and my friend Dennis is one of these kids who's either going to be good or go bad. Yeah. And he's really high tech. He could build a nuclear weapon in his basement or have an illegal radio station. So he had an illegal radio station, and I think America should be grateful that that's where he went. But we played radio on the weekends. We were doing rock and roll radio on FM with an illegal transmitter. In Rockford, Illinois. In Rockford, Illinois. There was nothing else on the air at the time, anything like that. And, and we would do that on the weekends. We actually went out and sold ads, you know, at 12 years old. I had actually, it, it was a different time. I mean, you may remember. Oh, there I do. It was a different so time. Much. You could go out in the summer. We had to do things like get a job. You know, right. I mean, we could have been eight, nine years old, and parents would say, it's summer, do something. Read a book, go out and be productive. So I sold, this sounds so ancient now, seeds, door to door, you know. I sold cards. So I learned, you know, greeting cards. And I sold um, whatever was there to earn points and get telescopes and cool stuff. It was a different time then. It was a different time. Now yeah. you got to go out with an armed guard because right. some of the neighborhoods are a little too weird and you don't know if the guy behind the door is, uh, is there wearing a LoJack device. Yeah. So uh, I miss that time a lot. I think some neighborhoods you can do it, but it's a, it's a sense of an America that was where there was that work ethic. It's still out there, but it seems we have to look harder for it. So, yeah. so that's how the radio thing started, and that opened the door to meet other people in legal radio because they thought, oh, these kids are cool. And the station where I ended up working a few years later and actually met my wife, the future mm -hmm. wife-to-be, it's a great, great WROK. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually, a couple of guys there liked Dennis and I so much that they were giving us equipment they didn't need. So we mm -hmm. had a pretty cool illegal radio station. So fast forward to today and I'm still playing. It's still, still going strong. It, huh? And it's awesome. So I get to do what I love to do from the start. You're involved in so much in the San Diego area. We're going to get into some of that in just a minute. What's a typical day like for you right now? <laughs> well, let's see. I do the morning show on KCBQ 1170, another big powerhouse radio station. 50,000 watts. I uh, had a big top 40 heritage and a little country for a while, country music. But we've had that as a talk station since 99. So I, I get up at about 4.20. Uh -huh. uh, Mrs. Larson is very excited about that because after uh, doing mornings now for a few years, uh, the dogs are on a different time. They uh -huh. get up They get up about 3.45. I hear them. She gets up and feeds them. I roll out of bed at 4.20, you know, prepping in the car, ready to go on the air at 6, from 6 to 9 a.m. And then there's all the me incorporated things that happen between 9 and, and 2. Then I'm back to sister station KPRZ in right. the afternoon from 2 to 4. So yeah. keeps me off the street. And again, Mrs. Larson's happy about it. But that. you also have to do a lot of research for your radio you program, do. too, as well. But see, that gets back to, and, and there's lessons here. I mean, if people are watching a Sunday morning going, oh, great, this is you know, a couple of guys talking about media. Yeah. Here's what I'm passionate about, Alan. Uh, based on those American roots, and summertime especially, if it wasn't for summertime, where my mom particularly, and, and encouraged by a grandfather and an uncle when my parents split up, if they hadn't encouraged me to use the time wisely, I wouldn't have done things like, all right, I've got hours, I'm sitting on the front porch, and I'm going to read a pile of books. Right. So I learned a skill without saying, here, you have to learn this skill. Yeah. And, and I would read all kinds of things, usually nonfiction. So mm -hmm. I got conditioned. It's the kind of thing that I guess you would do at the Evelyn Wood speed reading class later on. I mean, I just got used to loving to read. I mean, I'm sitting here. This is rare for me not to have something right here to read. If I've got a dull moment, I've got my nook. If I get in a traffic jam, 
And if you use a nook or is that like text? Oh, yeah, yeah. I will start, you know, start reading. So, so I, you use every moment. So that, that wires you for the prep. So I'm always prepping. You, know? you, you were multitasking before multitasking yes. actually became It's a little uh, schizophrenic. Popular. It's probably, there's yeah. all kinds of things that psychologists <laughs> could have a field day with it, but it, uh -huh. it, it keeps me going. And, and I love that. And I look forward to going to work every day. And thank God, I mean, we've been blessed. I, uh, even in this crazy business, in media in general, the way it's changed a lot, to be able to do something you wanted to do as a kid right and and to to grow that and kind of morph with the uh -huh. times to go from where early on I was playing rock and roll music to where for the last 35 years in San Diego doing content and being involved in the community mm -hmm. do something that I hope is is significant and encouraging other people to excel in whatever their job happens to be that floats my boat. That gets right. me excited. I know you're very so. passionate about the business. Yeah. On your radio show, what's on people's minds these days? <laughs> I mean, it, it's pretty obvious we've got the dead. We do. Uh, we do re recipes, and we yeah. You cover all bases. It's in, all. Huh? It starts with we're out of money. Why aren't these knuckleheads in Washington D.C. figuring this out? It starts uh -huh. with that. Um, people are fed up with what's happening in Sacramento. Uh, they've had the scales fall from their eyes, if you will, for uh, to use a biblical example for uh, seeing what's going on at San Diego City Hall with bloated pensions. I think people have been blown away the deals that have been made while no one was looking. Then fingerprints from Republicans and, and Democrats and in-betweens, Whigs and Federalists are in there as well. Um, so obviously the bottom line considerations are real significant right now. The jobless situation is huge. Again, one of the things, and maybe it came out of uh, coming from a uh, situation where parents split up and back in the, those right. of us in the baby boom that from the get-go, I felt motivated to learn to do as many things as I could do so that as things changed, you know, whatever God has given me the ability to do, I would be able to adjust bob and, and weave yeah, and adjust. Exactly. And what's yeah. interesting, for a long time people said, well, you have to be a specialist, you know, do one thing well, which is great, yeah. but people aren't hiring one thing well people anymore. Yeah. They want to get true. rid of 20 people and I want right. the guy who never sleeps. Not in the broadcast business, no, that's for sure. No. And it may be that, no, I, could, I can't exactly be a brain surgeon tomorrow morning, nor do yeah. I think I can learn that. Or what I want to, right? Um, but that's maybe, one of, again. That's yeah. one of the things. I mean, yeah. you're passionate about this business, yeah. and that's very obvious. Let's get into the fact of uh, and, and talk about some of the people that you've had a chance to meet and interview over the years. And we're gonna, I'm gonna toss out some names here and give Ooh, me your word take. Association. Yeah, give me your take <laughs> on these individuals, and, and maybe tell me something we don't already know about them. First off, Arnold, are we gonna be looking at pictures here? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna see some pictures. Okay. First right. off, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger, this is the weirdest thing. First of all, I, along with many others, disappointed uh, in the indefensible Nunez commutation. There he is trying to kill me. Uh -huh. um, he's actually, <laughs> he's the one on the left. Um, it, I guess it's kind of like one of his movies where he's there, what was it, Twins with Danny DeVito. Uh -huh. It's a weird, although I think I'm taller than he is by a hair. But it's a weird relationship. We're still friends. I uh, haven't talked to him much since the latest stuff hit the fan. Did you have any idea? Did you have any idea this had was no going idea. on? Had no idea. It shocked no, a lot of people, no, I, obviously. I have been with him in his cigar tent having uh -huh. uh, you know, briefings, discussions right. off the record. Even his closest confidants had no idea that was there. Now, they went and investigated and said, did he do things like that during his seven years as governor? And they found no evidence. So <laughs> that ruled many of us. Yeah. But uh, we're, we're friends. I, I See, sometimes people say, oh, you're conservative politically. You just don't get along with, with liberals. I get yeah. along with anybody, and I find yeah. them fascinating. I may vehemently disagree, and Arnold, I, kept, I would tell him, and I still do. I'll say, listen, um, we have an increasingly long list where you and I disagree, mm -hmm. but I still like you. All right. You know, so yeah. we find out, because that's the only way you're going to ever persuade somebody to your sure. position. Otherwise, you're preaching to the choir. Yeah. So. Former President Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford. Good and decent man. Um, he uh, I had a, well, that's interesting. I'll go back. I was nine years old with my grandparents. I met him when I was nine in Washington, D.C. My grandparents took me back there. John Anderson was our congressman. He's the guy who actually got me as a young kid to be politically tuned in. Uh -huh. We're in the congressional dining room. Gerald Ford comes by. And you know, this is well before the whole Watergate, and he becomes vice president uh, in that era, and then suddenly he's president. But had a chance to uh, meet him at other events. It was the old Andy Williams. San Diego opened at Torrey Pines, uh -huh. and it was Leon Parma, local banker and uh -huh. businessman, who says, uh, hey, uh, we're out there interviewing. He says, you know Bob Hope? I said, well, I don't, but I'd love to. He said, well, you know Gerald Ford? I said, well, actually, I do from 20-some years ago. Yeah. Um, but just, just one of those people that, you know how this business right. is. You, you get really blessed to have paths cross, and you have the ability in this 